Welcome to Trustee Talk, and thank you for joining us. I'm Dick Murgatroyd, and our guest today is Anderson Township Trustee and First Vice President of the Board of Trustees, Josh Gerth. Josh, good to see you. Good to see Always you. Always good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. for sure. We're, uh, I know we want to talk a little bit about uh, trustee meetings and what happens at trustee meetings. Yeah. And because um, I, I, I guess for the most part, a lot of people probably don't come to trustee meetings to, to speak of. And I don't know if it's just that they don't, unless there's something to... Uh, complain? Pick, pick up, pick up, <laughs> well, complain or, you know, or perk their interest. But I th today I think people have so much access to you all in so many ways, whereas used to be. I mean, the only way they really had access was to if they saw you on the street or they knew who you were and called you. Right. Or could come to meetings, because I, I remember when I was judge executive in Kenton County, I mean, unless there was some issue that was just one of those burning issues, we would sit alone in the courtroom for, right. for many meetings. In fact, that there was a point <laughs> where the newspapers used to call and say, if there's nothing really exciting tonight, just call us if something happens. <laughs> they even quit coming. So. Well, and in some respects, that's the way it should be. Uh, if, you know, and, and you're right, no one typically, I shouldn't say no one, we do not get a big crowd at any of our trustee meetings. And I think that that's good in the fact that when there typically is a crowd, it's usually because of some issue. Uh, and so if there's not a lot of people at a meeting, then in theory you're, you're, doing, a good you're job. doing an okay job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I will say that it's not always the case that people show up to complain about something. Uh, for instance, this last uh, week, we had a board meeting that I think we had probably 75 people in the crowd. And it was, it was a very interesting group because you had people there that were uh, there for several different reasons. Um, one of which, though, was the promotion of seven new firefighters uh, to our force or, or joining our force. Well, that brings, you know, oh, sure. spouses yeah. and, and, and family members and kids and other things that normally don't come to the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but it's, uh, but I think, I mean, I always, I always welcomed our people coming because it was kind of nice to see faces. And, and, and we, if, if we had folks there, a lot of times we'd just open it up to, if they had questions or if they, yeah. you know, something like that. Some people just were there for curiosity to see if we were going to, you know, do something right. bad. Yeah, <laughs> right. And if we, if we didn't, then they'd walk out happy in that. So uh, You know, it's, <clears throat> it's been an interesting, you know, we're closing in on, I guess, the first year. Uh, yeah. of, of our term, myself and, and Andrew Pappas, who's the, the newest trustee as well. And, and it has been very interesting uh, being here. It's, uh, I think I mentioned it last time, it's kind of, you know, good, bad, and ugly. And, and it has been, I mean, it's been great. I, I've really enjoyed this first year. And a lot of it has been, you know, eye-opening and, and lessons learned just being in office, things that we didn't realize happened. Uh, we are now faced with. Um, and last week's board meeting was a pretty good example of how all these things that we deal with throughout the month kind of all come together at these board meetings for us to make decisions on. And uh, I, I am, you know, continually amazed at the community that we live in and just in terms of the collaborative spirit between the schools, the uh, chamber, the park district and the township and a lot of the things that we talk about in, in the township have effects on those different entities as sure. well and vice versa <clears throat> and so it's it's been this first year has been great um, I, I've enjoyed you know we talked about collaboration when we were running it we have absolutely been having those conversations with the entities I just mentioned and but one of the best things about it has been working with the staff here at Anderson Township. I, I am constantly uh, amazed at the the passion, the support, the dedication that the people at Anderson Township have for their community and the job of running this township. Uh, and, and I've really enjoyed working with Andrew Pappas and Russ Jackson oh, yeah. uh, and Ken Dietz. Uh, it, it's, been, it's been great. Um, I really have enjoyed it, and, and 
It's, you know, it's been interesting at times, and it's been challenging at times, but we are all working together pretty well, and that's made it, that's made it fun. Well, I think that's important, and I think, I think that, uh, you know, the good thing is you, it's a small group. I think with small groups, you can, you can accomplish a lot sometimes, where if you have a larger group, it, it becomes unwieldy at times, or you get a lot of, of um, unwanted synergy that happens because of certain different right. issues, but which is not all bad because, you know, it, it's good to have different vo different opinions, in you know, going through the process. Yeah, the key is, if Congress could learn this, would be <laughs> amazing. Uh, that you know, in the end, you find the most common path that will lead you to the next step or the next, right. you know, a success in the mission. And yeah, and we, you know, we do not agree. Uh, I found out that we don't all have the same opinions this year. So we have had discussions that we don't all agree on necessarily, but I think it has been great that we've figured out a way to come to common ground and move forward. And, and we are three different people. Um, I mean, as you know, Russ, uh, founded Anderson Township. Oh, yeah. So uh, he's the patriarch. Uh, Andrew is, you know, is... Andrew. Andrew's a renaissance man. <laughs> I've is. seen him, you know, he, he goes to the same gym. I've seen him bench press 300 pounds, and I've seen him rescue kittens out of his dumpster in the back of his dry cleaner. So he's a he's the gentle giant he is. of the group. He really is. He's, he's. Uh, and, and he is. He's been, uh, he's been... Both of those guys have been great to work with. And then Ken Dietz, the fiscal officer, is just about the most steady as you go guy I, I've which you know I've ever been around good. which in his position is great absolutely yeah yeah absolutely and uh, it um, well I think that's important I think that that the fact that you all do you respect each other you get along but you still have uh, differences of opinion yeah. at times and, and 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 that's really I guess government is um, it's really what government should be is, is you know it, 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 it's it's good to be able to be to voice those opinions, but you find the ways to move because sometimes you don't always get exactly what you want. But if you're on the path to at least make something good happen out of it, you have to kind of give in a little bit at times. I, I think you do, and I think the word is compromise. And I I I think. Nationally speaking, compromise has been one of those words that has been Lost. coined as a bad word. <laughs> yeah, it's something it is. That's, that's a negative word. Yeah. And in reality, it's not. No. Um, and the government's job is to provide basic services, depending on what level you're at. We here at the township, that's police, that's fire, that's road maintenance. Um, and at the national level, obviously, it gets much broader than that. But case in point, you mentioned Congress. I mean, if nothing gets done, that is not what government's no. intent was. Government's no. intent was to continue to you know, provide those services and move things forward. And Absolutely. if there's no movement, uh, you're in trouble. And, th and that's the case too here at, at the township level. Uh, and that comes together at our board meetings where we are presented with issues that you know, we don't uh, necessarily know about until that board meeting. And that's one thing that was interesting about the last board meeting. We for you know a lot of i think people are under the the people don't realize that we can't get together as trustees prior to board right. meetings or right. or any time no. and talk about issues right so for the, a lot of times we are seeing the things that come up at board meetings for the first time and it's our chance to have discussion about those things uh last thursday for instance uh, a neighborhood came seeking a request to put in lights street lamps and to do that even though they are done by Duke Energy, the township's role in that is to front the money so that they can be installed, and then the homeowners pay back that installation and the cost to run those lights and their property tax. And in order for that to happen, the homeowners have to agree, uh, the majority of them have to agree to do this. Well, we had a public hearing at the last meeting. The public hearing is for people to come from the neighborhood and give their input normally a public hearing happens and then at least my experience so far with like zoning and other issues and then there's a vote or a decision made at a later date and it just so happens that in lighting district case and this was just me being new there's a public hearing and the decision comes down in that same meeting or at least it was oh, really? supposed to 
So these you know, residents show up, and uh, the majority of them did want the lighting district. But a couple of people were there asking questions that weren't necessarily in favor for it. So that prompted me to ask some questions, which prompted, I think, Russ Jackson to say, well, OK, there, if there's questions and people haven't gotten answers to things, we, we need to defer this decision. And so I think people walked out of that meeting from that neighborhood thinking, well, what just happened? I thought we had a majority. And I think, and I, you know, I think the, the problem was, was that we, didn't, you know, we don't get a chance to discuss this um, until it's brought before us. So that's why the decision was deferred in that particular case. And, and I think people look at that as, well, you know, that's not movement. But, but it is in the sense that we now have seen it. We can now well, yeah. give more thought to yeah. it and make a decision at the next meeting. Yeah, but, I mean, but you're not, I guess, you don't have to make a decision at that meeting, is it? I mean, you don't. You I don't. Mean, it's not required to do that. No, but I think in the past it has happened. Well, yeah, and, and which, <laughs> so. which, yeah, you know, and I understand. And, it, and you know, and probably in some cases it's a decision that's fairly simple as far as right. you can do it. But right. if it's something that involves... A little more involved, I think you do want to take time. I mean, do you do you make announcements prior to the meetings if there is something on the agenda that is a public hearing? Yes, you, you're required. I think to have to. There is, yeah. Give so many days' notice. We do. Yeah, we that, do that have to give on the agenda. We do have to give notice, and that is why people who do show up at those board meetings show up because they do know that that's a topic that we're yeah. going to discuss at the meeting. Now, alternatively, we also have. Um, uh, what we call our public session, open session. So anyone can come to the meeting and bring before the board any issue they want or express an opinion to the board about whatever matter they'd like. Uh, and that's just something that happens, or at least that segment is carved out in every board meeting. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so it doesn't need to be a formal request. There doesn't have to be a formal notice. And I, that's why I want people to understand if people want to just show up at the meetings and discuss something or bring up an idea, and it doesn't have to be bad, it could bring up, you know, hey, we'd like to, you to consider this, that is also a place you can do it, in addition to calling us or emailing us. Um, so that's like an agenda to. item on every meeting? It is an agenda item on every meeting. If somebody has something yeah. in particular they want to Absolutely. Want to bring up. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that the, the um, I mean, I, again, I think there are so many opportunities for people to, now to have input with you guys, which I think is great. Uh, but I, I don't think anything is any better than the live opportunity to have exchange, to ask questions for you guys and for people to ask you questions. Right. And to uh, then to do it in that forum. Yeah. Which I think is what makes it great. And, and I think you're right. Because I think a lot of people, because I think, you know, a lot of times people come with a with, a, with their mind made up on something. And then after they listen to discussion, a lot of times they, they go away th with a whole different mindset about that particular issue. Right. That may not be what they, when they came in. So it, it is a great an opportunity to do that, which if you don't have that open discussion, th then they, they don't really know all, that, all sides of the, of the case. Which, yeah, you know, that, that's a good point. And, and I think it's, it's apropos for discussion as it relates to ACTV, for instance, because one of the things that at the board meeting during the public session is we had several people there who were there in support of ACTV. And as a fact, our board meetings are uh, broadcast, broadcast on yeah. ACTV, and, and I think they're still live. There, there were people there, and, and this may be news to some of your viewers, and maybe, maybe not, but that we're, there, there has been a proposal that uh, the township is no longer going to be able to fund ACTV and the operations of ACTV. And that had gotten out to people in the public over the course of the last few weeks. And so people from the public did come and express their support for ACTV. And I think probably five or six people um, got up and spoke in, in favor of continuing, um, the township's continuing to support from a funding uh, support of ACTV. That you know, is part of the agenda after the public meeting is when we, the trustees, get a chance to discuss um, whatever we would like to discuss. And so I took the opportunity to respond to some of the people that came to the board mm -hmm. meeting. And I, 
what I explained to them was this decision about ACTV was not just a, well, cut a line item out of the budget type of decision because we know the history of ACTV and how long this has been around. We know that there are people that, uh, that watch it. But we also, I, and I think the people in the audience didn't know this, we had you know, talked to ACTV several months ago about you know, giving them a time period to come up with some funds or figure out a way that we could alternatively support ACTV and the funding or the operations going forward. And I'm not sure that the people that were in the audience that night knew that information. Now, they might have, but it gives us a chance as trustees to explain to the public, the people mm -hmm. that would come to that meeting, uh, about why we make certain decisions. And that's important. I mean, that, that is the, the openness of government is never more clear than when you are talking to people in public, right. and especially right. when it's in that type yeah. of forum. And so although the decision may not be what the public wants to hear, or at least a certain segment of the public, it is, it's important for us to discuss that, and that's a good time to do it. Because I think one of the things that people you know, need to understand is that over the last few years, well before I got in office, the Anderson Township government is, you know, is facing a challenge in terms of revenue. And we have cut basic services, so police, fire, road, to the bare bones. And it is at a level where you can't really be cut anymore. And those are the basic services that we are required to provide. ACTV is a great amenity to the township, but it is an amenity. It's not a necessity or a service that we, you know, are required to provide. And it makes it tough when you have to look at that and decide, well, how do we appropriate this going forward? Um, and again, I think those decisions that are made, people should know why they're made. People should know why we come to those decisions and that they're not just decisions that happened overnight, but they take months of thinking about before the mm -hmm. decision is rendered. Well, hopefully, there'll be a good way to work through all that. Right. Um, obviously, I'm prejudiced toward ACTV. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, I mean, and and in general, I, um, I I would not, you know, I I believe in the the service that it provides uh, only because I've been involved in it so many years. I mean, not here, but in in. Um, Access television, which yeah. is because uh, I, I, on the other side of the river, been through lots of these these discussions many many times, and 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 I know that that's it. It is a it's a. I agree, it's not a necessity, but it's a service that so many people depend on. I don't think we realize how many until you start to dig into it. And, and yeah, and see. I wish there was some way to quantify that. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure that there is. And, and media has changed, obviously, over the years from the fact that, you know, people do get their news instantaneously, and they do, I mean, even ACTV has, you know, YouTube channels and things like that where right. people are picking up news and picking up stories and picking up information. Our website, you know, is certainly one of those as well. So all of this, this social media, interactive media, digital media that's taking place has you know, has attributed to this. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it is, it's something that makes us as a township unique. It does. And, and I it love really that does. about it. I love the fact yeah. that we have something <clears throat> different than other townships don't have. Well, and I, I, I guess I look at it as uh, the last frontier of this type of communication for a place, for a township or, or in any community because there's, the, 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 as the years have gone by, uh, local television, as such, which in this case is Cincinnati TV. Yeah, you know they used to fill that need of being able to bring um, very local programming to a community, and and they got out of that. I mean, they quit doing that, and yeah. so the last last frontier or last group that can do that is ACTV, and and it's because they can bring very specific things about this township to the community that, that won't ever be seen anywhere else because, I mean, local TV can't handle it. So, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really hopeful, like I said, as I'm, I, I understand where 
having been on both sides and, and having to understand the, the fact that most communities like this are facing very tight budgetary issues. And there's only so much to go around and you have to figure out what the priorities are. So it's, a, it's not an easy task, right? you know, but I, I, I commend you. I think, I think it's worthwhile to, to, to look, listen and to, to get as much input as you can and hopefully that, that there will be some common ground again that yeah. we talked about earlier that you find that will maybe can make something. Yeah. Or, you know, well, the door is definitely still open. Yeah, and I, and I think that's the best way to look at it. I think if people just understand that you're, you're really still, you, you know, there's still opportunities where you can maybe find a way. Yeah. I, I mean, that's, it's tough. I mean, I understand that. That's a, that's a tough, uh, tough place to be in, especially when you're up against the cost of, of uh, safety, which is your police and fire, and that those costs are constantly rising. They are. Yeah, and, they, and they are, and I think I've mentioned it before. We've gone from basically being subsidized with, for instance, our police department through the sheriff's office um, where they used to provide the services out here at, at no cost. It, it now is going to be pushing at least $2.5 million yeah. next year and, and probably continuing to rise after that. And, and that's to provide the same level of service that, that we have, have today, yeah. which... We do need, I mean, there is the discussion of, well, could we cut back? Well, yeah, we could cut back, but there is um, an ever-increasing activity in the petty crimes yeah. and drug-related crimes. And it is, uh, I, I see it up and down Beachmont. I've seen it in my neighborhood. Um, and it's not going away. No. And in order to get the special units that you need to focus specifically on those type of crimes like RENU, uh, which is the regional uh, narcotics unit out of the sheriff's department. In order to get those type of services, you, you got to pay for them. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, it's, it's, not, it's not cheap. And, and it, you know, it comes with the benefit of knowing that we're doing it to prevent this stuff. And at some point, you know, maybe we won't have to do that if we can curb this problem. But it's going to take a few years of us fighting this. Well, and, and also it impacts the future of your community as far as the economic growth of this community. Yes. If, if you are not able to present a, a safe environment, um, that deters businesses from, from looking here and wanting to come here, people wanting to move here. So. Right. A lot of things hinge on on being able to, to get your arms around that. And we have so much momentum now in that, that area sure that do. we want to make sure that that continues. Well, the other thing, and, and then the other item which you mentioned before, and that is that, that you know, infrastructure is extremely expensive and, and, and just providing, and you guys have got a lot on the, play, on, on the uh, horizon as far as, as just general infrastructure with regard to roads. Uh, Beachmont <laughs> Avenue, which is always an issue, and yeah. I know as I, I looked and I saw in the um, October issue of the of the um, I keep remember the insights. Yeah, uh, it, it talked about some of the things you all are going to be looking at coming 2015, and you got some big projects. There. We do, and they're all it's kind of like the perfect storm. Uh, we've got the Beachmont and Five Mile intersection, what the continuous flow intersection, which I think is. You know, some people are concerned about how that is going to play out. Beach Mountain Five Mile is notoriously one of the worst intersections. This will not only curb the accidents, but should increase access from Five Mile onto Beachmont. Uh, but that will start in, uh, in 2015, which will cause some issues in, in traffic oh, yeah. flow. We're improving the downtown uh, area of Beachmont, which is from Five Mile down to Asbury as you head east. There'll be lands or uh, streetscaping and, and some other improvements there. And then Kroger. Kroger expanding will cause um, the vacation of Town Center Way, which is the road that comes off of Beachmont and runs through Kroger. Uh, that will be rerouted. Uh, and if that continues to go as we think it will, 
will start also next spring. Well, there already, will be a lot of road. They've torn down a lot of those yes, two buildings. they've torn so. that stuff down. Yeah. And so all of those road projects will kind of come together at the same time. Now, that being said, it's not going to be gridlock up there. They're going to do this a systematic way to make sure that things continue to flow. But there's going to be a lot of activity. And it's yeah. good stuff. There, This is all things that will improve access to Anderson Township and to those related retailers. Uh, but it's going to, you know, you got to break a few eggs to make an oh, omelet, yeah. and this is this is going to require some breaking of eggs. You've got some uh, good stuff on the agenda. Before we close out, um, I guess, how, how do people find out what is on the agenda for a meeting if they would want to come? I mean, is there something, a way to, to access that prior to your meetings? Yeah, you can go to our website, andersontownship.org, and there is a link on the website to, it's, under, it's usually under the calendar section, and you click on, you know, it says board meeting, click on that link, and then there'll be a, a link to the actual agenda that's posted. Good, okay. And you meet once a month? We meet twice a well, month, twice actually. A month. Okay. We meet as a, a kind of a more informal planning meeting the first Thursday of the month, and that's during the day, the late afternoon. And then the formal board meeting with the one that's... Um, that the one that's televised is the third Thursday of every month. Which would be the one that most people would probably come to. It's the most would, fun. You would have, yeah, it <laughs> yeah. is. Well, I, I tell you what, I, 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 uh, you know what, that's a great, that's the, the challenges are, are always going to be there, but I think it's also what makes it interesting and, and for, for you especially. I think it's, uh, you've survived a pretty good year. It's been a good year. It's yeah. been, like I said, it's been challenging at times, but we've got a lot of momentum that we've kicked off this year that I think is going to continue well into next year, if not beyond. And uh, and like I said, it's been great working with everybody, the staff and my fellow trustees. It's it's, it's, it's really been good. Well, having that chemistry can make a lot of difference. Yeah. So, hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks Appreciate for your you doing service. This. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy being with you and and. Uh, uh, I think Anderson Township's in good hands. Thanks. I think they are. And thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope that, uh, and thank you for sharing part of your day with us. We hope the rest of your day goes well and that you make every day uh, one to remember. And on behalf of myself, Dick Murgatroyd, and on behalf of our producer, Nikki Bishop, and our director, Andy Crozier, and uh, uh, all of our staff here at ACTV, we want to wish you all a very merry and blessed Christmas. Thanks for being with us.